Hello, Drake Hogg and Sad Boy Cinema here, Don't Mind the Calic, and today I'm reviewing the new Falling to the Pavement EP. In 2001, Michael Scoopin killed a pig on live television. That title is so long, I couldn't even write it in my review book. This is a four track EP from a producer I'd never heard of uh, until Frostbite posted on his Instagram. Why the fuck was I gonna say Twitter? I don't use Twitter. That he's on the CP, and so I checked it out. And. This project is pretty good, so I want to talk about it. Now, obviously, I don't only want to talk about things that are good on this channel. Like, uh, I would love to do a review of Gunna's new Drip Season 4 album, which sucks. I gave it 3 out of 10. Uh, I post reviews on my Insta. Uh, but th talking about better albums are just more fun than talking about trash ones, because I don't like to trash art. People put their time and effort into it, and I don't like to just shit on their efforts. Now, this isn't a standard beat tape. You don't get, like... Random trap type beats, like there's no Tay Keith type beat, or like fucking Block Boy JB type beat. These are just really soulful, smooth instrumentals, like more avant garde, abstract hip hop beats, and they are pretty well done. Pretty soothing, pretty lo fi. Uh, the bass in a lot of them are pretty subdued, this drums, everything is just pretty subdued, but all of it feels present enough to keep your attention throughout. Throughout, I mean, this project is only about eight, nine minutes, so it's not like it goes on for an extremely long amount of time, but the time that it does run, does flow by pretty smoothly and there's nothing really holding it back. The first two instrumentals hold true to that, uh, while I feel like the fourth one, the closing instrumental, isn't really the best in my opinion. Especially because the third track is the one where Frostbite is featured, the only rapper on the tape as well, uh, and I feel like having a beat as sleepy as the fourth beat is doesn't work as well when the third track is so energetic and so interesting, it just feels like it pulls everything else down. And talking about that third track with Frostbite on it, it's pretty good. Frostbite flows in a very straightforward kind of way that isn't really typical to his own music, and I feel like that works really well for a project like this. Especially considering it's not his own music, it's him being on someone else's tape. It's very boom bap, very 90s x esque esque fuck. Lyrically, is pretty solid as well, like, he has a few different references to different things, including the artist and the project itself. Uh, but I do feel like the last line is pretty weak. All the struggles that I'm keeping tuck got my brain creasing. I can see what he's going for with that bar. You feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders or something and you feel pressed down, but on a technical level, it doesn't make sense. And if you've listened to Frostbite's music before, you would know that he repeats a line a lot of times, like after he says it sometimes, like at the end of a verse, he'll, uh, could be to fill space. I think it's more of a stylistic choice and really so it works sometimes, other times it doesn't. Here it works because it adds to the energy, it adds to the fun, it adds to a few different things on the track and I feel like it helps fill space and, you know, move the track along. But I, that line though, if you don't know how brains work, the more creases that your brain has, the more intelligent you are. That's why Pugs' brains are so damn smooth, because they're so stupid. Humans' brains, on the other hand, have quite a bit of creases. But being stressed out and having a lot of stuff on your brain isn't going to add more creases or anything. I'm pretty sure that as a human being, getting smarter doesn't add more creases. That's just not how it works. You're born with as many creases as you get, I think. But then again, you're born with more bones than you end up with in adulthood, so... What do I know? But that track overall is pretty solid. Obviously the best on the tape because it has the most momentum with it having a featured verse. Uh, and the beat is really solid, as all the beats are on here. But I do, again, the last beat on the tape, it feels like it is just so sleepy. After that energetic track, you get this bedtime story. And before I give my score, I have to say that I've changed my scoring system for EPs. It doesn't make sense to rank EPs on the same scale that you rank albums or mixtapes because they're two very different things. Albums or mixtapes are like full thoughts and ideas and full fleshed out things, whereas EPs are just like mini palate cleansers or like little tasters, appetizers, whatever you want to call it. So it doesn't feel right to rank the EPs and the albums on the same scale. So therefore, I have a five point grading system, you know, like A, B, C, D, F. Uh, and here's a, you know, image of every single e e e EP on this new scale. And so, this EP is a B. It's pretty solid. I'll, I'll listen to, you know, that Frostbite track some more. It's pretty solid. A couple of beats on here. Pretty solid. But yeah, that's all I have to say. Bye.